Konnichiwa, y'all. I'm Mr. Kent, and welcome to Kabuki Theater. Kabuki Theater is an old form of Japanese theater, and that's what you saw in the little video using children as kabuki actors. So I thought today I would teach you how to do the very same thing. Now that happened inside the middle of a shopping mall, but I think I can show you how to do some kabuki right in your own home. Now what are some kabuki basics? Well, in the video clips, the kids were wearing costumes called kimonos, they were wearing a lot of makeup called kumadori, and they were doing a lot of very expressive moves with their face, with their hands, but also with little folding hand fans called sensu. Now, I happen to have a kabuki room in my house where I have a closet full of kimono and I have a whole lot of sensu. Let me show you some of what I've got. Now, this is a kimono. You can see it's almost like a robe and it's got very long drapey sleeves. This might be a kimono for a princess or an onagata, which is the name for all of the female characters. Now take a look at this one. This one might be for a samurai, a young guy. A samurai is the word for all of the male characters or all the boys inside a kabuki play. You can see its sleeves are a little bit shorter. And in fact, none of the kimonos have pockets. You use your sleeve as your pocket. This is for a villain or oni. Now, since I don't have a lot of hair, I used a wig that I got from a party store, but maybe you have some hair gel or some hairspray that your mom has, and you can make your hair stand up really spiky to look really scary. Now, let's say you don't have a kimono. You don't have all of these things. Well, let me show you something that you could use right at home. Starting with a bathrobe. Now I've got my own kimono. And, like mine, many bathrobes come with their own little special belt or tie. This could be our obi. Kimonos are held closed by a little tie called an obi. Girls will wear their obi up high, just right under their arms. Boys will wear their obi right underneath their belly. Let me show you a way to do that. First, I'm going to put the left side of my kimono over the right side. Get, your, get a grown-up to help you if you don't know for sure which is left and which is right. And then we're going to tie ourselves into it. I just make one loop over, pull that nice and tight so it doesn't come off. And then I'm going to make one single loop just like that. Now, if you can't make a loop, you can make a bow or have somebody help you. Now, the tie of the obi goes in the back, so we're going to spin it around. So now, it's behind you. Perfect. Now, all we need is a fan, our own sensu. Let me show you a trick if you don't already have one yourself. Now, here are a couple of sensu I made by folding paper over and over again, little pleats. Again, if you're not sure how to do this, you can get a grown-up to help you. Then on one end, I just put some tape so I can hold it together, and then I have my own fan. Now, I also made this fancy one out of wrapping paper, some extra holiday paper that I had and I did the same thing, folding it over and over again, then using tape on one end so it has something to hold on to. Now, I'm almost ready. Let's practice some moves with a fan or sensu. Now, sensu or Japanese folding fans are used by kabuki actors to help tell the story. Whether you're onagata, samurai, or oni, you need a fan. And we use them in different ways. We can use them closed to be things like oars to row a boat, or even if we're casting out a line 
to fish or stirring a big pot. But we also can use them to show how we're feeling or what we're thinking. Let's say we wanted to show that we are happy. We might take our sensu up, cover everything but our eyes, make our eyes smile, and bounce our shoulders to show that we're happy and giggling. Or we might even use our arms like goalposts and bounce them one, two, three, saying, ha, ha, ha. But what if we're not happy? What if we're very, very sad? We might hold our hands up, straight line from a fingertip to your elbow, one fan right here at your forehead, looking down, very sad, and a little lift and drop of your elbows to show that you might even be crying. What if we're afraid something scary is coming to attack us and we don't know how to protect ourselves, so we might use our fan to show, and even our other hand as an extra one, not quite looking at what it is that's scaring us. And you can even change direction, so you can switch your hand to show, maybe I'm scared of you. Just kidding. Now I'm going to switch to my big fan to show one last thing. In our Kabuki stories, we might have a hero and a princess, and they're trying to defeat an evil villain, an Oni, a monster. Let me show you how you can be the monster and sort of like faint or pass out. You're going to put the fan back behind your head, and you're going to make your face look like it has makeup by using your eyebrows, your mouth, and even your nose to look really, really mean. Put one hand out in front like a stop sign and make a big sound with your voice. And yeah, sticking at your tongue. Now, if you do that one, two, three times, you've actually done a move called a mie. A mie has a beginning, a middle and an end. Three different moves for one final pose. And we pass out. You try. Now I've left my kabuki room and come into a hallway in my house that I'm going to use as my kabuki stage, my hanamichi. And now I'm ready to practice some moves. First, I'm going to start with onagata. Girls, if you're going to be an onagata, the first thing you want to do is make your knees touch and your toes point inside. And when you walk, you slide one foot in front of the other, never quite picking up your feet. See that? Next, samurai. While the girls close in, the boys move out. Your knees are nice and wide, far apart. Your toes are underneath them, pointing out. And when you walk, you pick up your foot. One, two, three. One, two, three. Really big, thunderous steps. Now, if you'd like to try being the bad guy, the Oni, the villain, just like the little boy in my video clip, you can put a fan back behind your head, one foot up, one hand up too. You have to have some good balance, and you're going to do little tiny hops right toward the stage. <sighs> well done. Now, you've learned some kabuki basics, so you can tell your own kabuki story. Whether you're a samurai, a boy, an onagata, a girl, or a monstrous villain, an oni, <sighs> using your bathrobe kimono, your folded paper sensu, with which you can show how you're feeling, what you're doing, or by making a special pose like a mie. <sighs> Thanks for watching and good luck, Kabuki actors.
Sayonara!